Over the past few months, I've been working on a uh, Podio solution that doesn't include Globiflow, but then has its own custom uh, automations and flows using the Podio API. So uh, this is what I what I have so far. Just to give you an idea of uh, what I'm looking to do. So we have our apps, property details, workup, offers, under contract, deals, contacts, buyers, comps, doc documents and settings so let's go into the properties so you get a property in we'll add a property and we get the map we save now my first flow will just populate some of the default fields down here we have contacts I add one of these, so that'll be the contact. Property on the owner, no notes, email, phone, number three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now we'll save this and return. Be in there. And now we have some property details. So we're talking on the phone to this person. Click Create Detail Record. So now the automation will create the detail record. Pop it up here, link it. So we can click into here. Now here are the details. It's a single family house. This two bed, two bath got pulled from Zillow. So we already know that. Ranch style. This will be a bi level. So wood construction, basement, there is an unfinished basement, attached to car garage, heat is gas, heat years 5, central AC, that's been 7 years old, breakers, public water, yes, city, water, water's on, no oil tank, Composite shingles, roof is 10 years old, bathrooms, kitchens haven't been updated for five to nine years, additional information, uh, this is a rental property, repairs needed, uh, foundation crack, update needed, None. Uh, what repairs would you do if you were going to stay in the house? Anything else I should know? This is a test. There is one mortgage. It's held by Chase Bank. How much is owed? Uh, 200,000 current interest rate. I should say this is 80,000 current interest rate. Point oh, three, four, five. Fixed current, none behind, not in foreclosure. Owner or tenant. How long have you lived in this house? Five years. Why are you selling? Can't afford anymore. What is your asking price? Two fifty. How did you get to this price? Uh, recent sold in area. Tax assessor value two ten. It's the current property listed, not listed. Listing company, do you have any properties for sale? New. What is the best? You get the idea. Here, go down here as far as you want. What would you do to sell or what is the lease you would take? I'll put that one in there. You'll see how I use that later. The lease will take is 240000 So, okay, we're done here. We can go back to our lead. So now you see it here. And okay, now we 
want to do a workup on this property because it seems interesting. They seem kind of motivated. So let's create a workup record. So now the flow, the automation will create the workup record. Click into here. And now you see we got pictures. These uh, images are taken directly from a Google Maps API. Pulls them in here. So you have the overhead, the aerial, and the street view. So there's the the uh, 200 York Street in Burlington. It's pretty cool. And now you also see that we pulled in the Zill link to the uh, the address. So we click on that link. Go to Zillow. I've also pulled in all the Zillow comps. We can click on each one of the comps, and we get the record there. I used Google Maps to get the distance from the comp to the actual property, which is pretty neat. Now I only pulled the first five comps. You can get a look at all the comps here in Zillow. And now here is a map that it's not zoomed in, zoomed out far enough, but usually this map will have the uh, the comps located on there so you can get a visual to see where they are. I guess 4.2 miles doesn't cover this map because I still have to mess around with that. Uh, here's also a different way to get the aerial view. I've downloaded the pictures and these are images now. So we can view them here and download them. These are calculation fields so it automatically pulls into a calculation field. These are actual images that are get pulled down there. I'm still trying to decide which way is better. I kind of like this, but this has its advantages too, as I can use these images in other forms that I'll show you in a minute. So now, if you want additional comparables, you can add them yourself. Uh, there's actions, you can follow up, go see the house, pull comps, make offers. Clicking on these will create tasks. Your strategy, wholesale, fix and flip, rental, target buyers. And now here's your offer formula. So the ask 240,000. Remember, this is what we put in in the uh, detail sheet. Now we figure out what the ARV is, probably from the comps. The ARV is like 280, 65%. These are defaulted values, repair costs, 25,000 repair costs. So the total with fees, 157,000 that we can offer, without fee, I mean. And now our wholesale fee, we can change that, but it's default to 5,000. And then our max allowable offer is 152,000. Any additional information, you can add some links in here to county tax sites, assessment, any MLS listing that might be for this property. And uh, below here is this is information I pulled from the Google API. It's the full formatted address, street, neighborhood, city, the county that this property is in, state, zip code, the zip suffix, the country, longitude, and latitude. This information is the Zillow information that I then reformat to show like this, which is much better. So this is the workup. You can add tests and, and whatnot. So okay, we did the workup. I'm gonna make an offer on this property. So we can come down here and say create offer record. And this will go pull information from the workup and create your first offer record. Apparently there's an error behind here. I'll have to check that out. All right, it actually did work. Sometimes Podio doesn't update refresh correctly and you don't get the, the actual reference pop back in here. But if you refresh the, uh, the item, then it will come in. So you hit that and now here's the offer. So we made 152,000, remember that was the MAO. We can change that if we want. Offer date, I just put in defaulted to tomorrow, whatever the next day is. Offer name, so this will be the name you're going to make the offer under, so I would do say Scotty Buys Houses, so that was my LLC name. We want to, uh, how we're going to send the offer in, and now 
It's pending. We haven't done anything. Notes. No notes. I don't know why this is uh, required, but I'll have to change change that. And uh, let's create offer letter. We can do this by clicking on this. And now an offer letter should be generated automatically based off this information. It takes a little bit because it's creating generating a PDF and then reattaching it here. So there it is. There's the offer letter. It's just a little chintzy one. So regarding offer on 200 York Street, Scott, thank you for your property. I'm interested. This is the owner address, the owner contact. There's my offer. And you can pull in pretty much anything you want into this, this letter. And there's letterhead, your logo, date, and whatnot. So now this actually gets attached to here. If like you refresh this, you'll see that there's the offer record, right? The offer file right there. So you can open that any time. So we made that offer. They did not like it, so we rejected it. Now let's go back to the property record. And the same goes, you can go under contract. Say you made this, this is under contract. And say create under contract record. Creates it, pulls it in. Date purchased. If there, we had any buyers in the system, this would automatically pull in the buyers that are targeting the zip code that the property is in is pretty handy and this is basically like your to-do list you can create marketing materials you can add fields for what you want to do normally after you get a under contract how you're going to market it banded signs closing date inspection date potential issues that you might have during this closing and you can attach files documents I'm still working on this area. This will probably expand and improve as I go on. And finally, we can say everything's been closed, create a deal record. And now the property is sold. And you can keep track of the sold price, the date is closed, any profit, which buyer bought it, testimonials from the buyer and seller, notes tags, documents, and what have you. Return to the set the, the lead, the property lead. Uh, one other th thing that I'm working on now, which is pretty neat, you have the property lead sheet. So we click on this. Let it churn for a little bit and come up with a property lead sheet in a moment here. I hope. Now I'm working on creating, allowing you to customize the actual content of any kind of report or lead sheet. And I'll show you that in a minute. So this is the lead sheet. So it pulls in the pictures from the workup, has all the information from the details. Formatting's a little off here. I have to make sure it's right. I think this is the reason why. But we can. You can adjust all this stuff. So this is all the information for the lead. Print that out, send it, what have you. So as I was talking about, that lead sheet is actually, if you go to documents, this lead sheet right here. So this is the document. You can keep track of the description, the version, what type of report document it is, the font size. We can change the font size, the font family whether it's a page size, a letter, legal, portrait, landscape, this is the actual contents, the template of that file. You can see I have merge fields in here, like this is the merge field for the my name. <clears throat> and this is the merge field for an image. So on the Workups app, the Zillow comps map field and image number two and this is image number three so those are those two two images at the top now we also have in the details you can see this is in the apps detail in the details app I want the type field 
and then also the style field and it keeps going down all the way through here it's in a table style this is you can format it it should format in HTML and this is a little more complicated than someone who is not familiar with HTML could probably handle but the simple parts of HTML just like paragraphs and highlighting bold uh, that's very easy and anybody can figure it out in 10-15 minutes and you can have that and so you can set up any kind of letter, any sort of uh, offer letter, report that you want for the system. Like if you want to pull in, I don't know, I still have to figure that out. But the uh, possibilities are pretty endless with the way this is set up and how I can use templates and merge fields to dictate what I want to pull in. I, I can pull in anything. This just tells me where the app is that I want to use and this part after the dollar sign is the field name that you can use. So I mean that's uh, kind of what I'm working on right now. It's pretty far down the line. There's still a lot of things I still have to iron out and, and get done but it's coming along pretty good. And the added bonuses, like I mentioned before, Globiflow is not involved in this at all which is a good thing because Globiflow just came out with the news that Podio has pretty much bought Globiflow and has eliminated all the lower tier pricing plans. You can only get Globiflow if you have a 5 plus user Podio Premium account which costs $120 per month which is ridiculous. You can no longer get Globiflow for $9 a month unless you already have an existing plan with Globiflow, then they'll let that continue. But you won't be able to sign up for any new accounts, which is crazy. Maybe they'll change that as time goes on, but right now, you're out of luck if you don't have Globiflow already. You have to pony up 120 bucks a month to get it. So, this doesn't use Globiflow, so we're good. And I was going to say something else, but I forget. Oh, I was going to say that to set all this up, all you have to do is it's all automated. You'll log into a little interface that I create. You'll approve the rights for me to install this or the, my system to install all these apps and the flows onto your, uh, your Podio application or your Podio workspace and click a button 25 seconds later it's all set up and you're ready to go it's pretty damn cool so if, uh, I'm not sure when this will be released because I keep uh, wanting to make it better and better and just iron out all the little bugs and kinks but uh, I'll keep you updated and if you have any interest I would love to hear I'm eventually be looking for some uh, some beta testers. So, uh, hope you like what you see. Thank you.